Now, the African Development Bank recently launched a 1,068-kilometer high-voltage electricity highway to be built between Kenya and Ethiopia. The project will take place over a period of five years. The African Development Bank, the World Bank, the governments of Ethiopia and Kenya will finance the project. Joining us now to discuss this project and infrastructure development on the continent is Gabriel Negatu, AFDB Regional Representative in East Africa. Gabriel, good to see you. So, finally, to we have uh, yes. progress on this uh, project that we've been talking about for so long. I do remember covering in East Africa and talking about it. And for now, finally, we are seeing a situation where a country in the region, which is short of power, is taking excess power from a country <coughs> in the region where there was that excess power with the building of uh, this uh, uh, infrastructure that was missing. Why did it take so long, do you think, to bring all these parties that are now funding this project? Well, thank you. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, you know, th this project, as you say, it has been in the making for quite some time. Uh, we at the African Development Bank have led the design and the preparation of this work. But as you can imagine, uh, when you have a, a power purchase agreement between two countries, that itself takes time to put in the appropriate legal and regulatory uh, frameworks in the two countries. But then uh, also the financing side, uh, it took some time for us to uh, syndicate this. And uh, the World Bank has come in, as you said, uh, the French government has also expressed an interest in addition to the governments of uh, Kenya and Ethiopia. So it took some time to prepare it, to put in place the uh, power purchase agreements and the wheeling agreements and so on. But uh, in the end, uh, we're happy to say that this has come to fruition, yeah. and uh, we're moving ahead full speed. Yeah. Was it difficult to convince all these partners to fund it? I know from the AFDB side, you guys would have been keen, the world being probably the same. But what about these other players? Was it difficult to convince them to say, hey, this project has got merit, let's put some money into it? Well, you know, uh, we, when you look at a project like this, uh, you, you have to look at a, a sort of a, a longer term horizon. Yeah. Uh, if you're only looking at Kenya today or in the next two years, then you might easily conclude that uh, the, the supply, in, the demand in Kenya does not warrant the kind of investment this project would take. But for us, we take a very uh, long term, if not long, at least medium term uh, perspective. And we also take a medium term perspective. Uh, Therefore, some of our partners were not convinced initially that the demand for uh, power in Kenya was such that it, it, it was worth the investment. But the way we looked at it was we need to look beyond Kenya. This is a regional project. We're building the highway between Ethiopia and Kenya. Yeah. But we're also putting money into the East Africa power pool, which is... Uh, a mechanism for trading energy between the countries in East Africa. We are also putting a lot of money into building uh, transmission lines and connecting Kenya with Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, and DRC. So power that's sold to Kenya at some point could easily be transferred onto any one of these countries. So you need to take a, a medium term uh, horizon as well as a regional perspective on something like this. Absolutely, and I see this is a lot of money that we're talking about here. Uh, we're just putting some figures on screen now for our viewers to see who is uh, putting in the money. I mean, we, if I can just quickly run through it, you are, as the African Development Bank, you're putting in $338 million, the World Bank 684, the government of Ethiopia 32, Kenya 88, and we've got uh, the French Development Agency coming in with 118. So easily over $1.3 billion that's being sunk into Absolutely. this. Now, in terms of solving the regional power shortage. How far are we now from sorting this out? Well, uh, le le let me just go back to the figures. Uh, you you're right. You know, our, our fund is not the largest in this, in this uh, project. Yep. But this is part of our own strategy to be uh, a convener, a connector of, of would-be financiers. So what we have done is put some money and leverage others, crowd others to come in. And that's a strategy that has served us very well. But in terms of the region, as I said, uh, most countries in this region have some energy endowment. Ethiopia, because of the topography, 
has a, a very good potential for hydro. On the other hand, Kenya has tremendous potential in geothermal and wind uh, energy. Yeah. As you know, just the other day we launched this mega, the largest wind farm in, in, in Turkana. Uh, on the other hand, Th Uganda has uh, potential for hydro as well. Uh, Tanzania, Rwanda have potential for uh, gas, whether it's methane or natural gas. So our approach is that we will help each of these countries develop their uh, comparative endowment, but then create the infrastructure to connect them. Yeah. And then through the East Africa Power Pool, create a marketplace of, for energy. Yeah. That way, if you have a surplus and I have a shortage, you and I can trade and vice versa. Lastly, uh, in addition to the East Africa Power Pool, we are also working on connecting the East Africa Pool to the Southern Africa Pool, yeah. which will then allow us to sell energy from Ethiopia all the way to the tip of the continent. So we are, in essence, creating an energy market for Eastern and Southern Africa and hopefully link it to the center with Inga and so on uh, coming down the pipeline. So we are really creating the first energy superhighway where countries can trade in energy among themselves. So, so I'll come back to you with my question again. So how far away would you say we are from uh, energy security, if you like? Perhaps maybe beginning with the East Africa region and then tying up with the Southern Africa one, because we do know that on the southern tip of the continent, we are in trouble. I mean, it's extremely cold in Joburg today, but I can tell you ESCOM is saying, guys, don't use as much electricity. Try and save as much electricity as you can. Well, it's, it's, it's rather hard to put a precise date on it, but what I can tell you is we're well on our way to making the Eastern Africa region energy self-sufficient collectively. You see, you cannot have one country be self-sufficient while others next door are not, are not self-sufficient. So collectively, we're well on our way. And I would say in the next five years, uh, the, the, the old blackouts and so on will be a thing of the past and East Africa could easily be selling power all the way up to the northern tip and the southern tip of uh, the continent. Absolutely.